Hello, welcome to module five, lesson one, start stop driven by temperature. So driving a start or a stop command based on a temperature and a temperature set point is a very common design pattern that you're going to run into. You're going to run into this in exhaust fans. You're going to run into this in enabling crack units, enabling fan coils, enabling cooling and heating states. You're going to find this just all over the place. So it's really important that we focus in on this lesson because while it may be basic, it is something that we are going to be using again and again and again. And as you recall from module four, we talked about the purpose of design patterns is kind of like pieces of Lego. And we're going to take these different pieces of Lego and we're going to build something by stacking these different bricks in different patterns. And that's how we end up with our programs. That's how really good programmers do it. They don't just write everything from scratch. They find pre-existing designs and they piece them together to achieve what they need from the programs they're writing. So the first thing you're going to want to do is make sure you're here in this EZIO FG kind of wire sheet right here, the base level wire sheet. We have one library that we've added. That's the EZIO sensor. And as you recall, we add our libraries by simply going under kit management, selecting our library. In this case, I've already selected it. You're going to click apply once you selected it, and then it's going to log you out of the controller for about five seconds, and then you log back in. But that's it. Now we're going to need to go and add a folder. And for each lesson we do, we're going to add a folder. So you saw how I did that. I right-clicked add folder. I go over here to my property, and I name it L1. And once I have that named, now I can double click on this folder and I can start writing my program. Now we know that this design pattern is going to turn on and off an output based on a temperature input. So right off the bat, what two points do we know we need? Well, we know that we need a temperature input. So we're going to go to the controller kit right here. And this is going to look different based on whatever programming software you're in. But as I discussed, once you understand what these blocks do and these design patterns, locating the different blocks, that's going to be the least of your worries. I mean, that's going to be pretty easy once you understand how all this stuff works. So we get our universal input and then we need our output. So I right click add object. Once again, going here, grabbing my output. We're going to name our outputs. That's always the first thing we want to do because sometimes you'll go and you'll write programs and you won't name outputs until the very end and then you're kind of confused. You're like, which one's which? Well, right here, we're going to know that this is exhaust fan command underscore because we can't do dashes. We're going to pick our channel, which is basically the physical address for the output. And we're going to pick DO1, digital output 1. We're going to go back over here to UI. And we're going to call this ZN underscore T, so zone temperature. We're once again going to pick UI1 here. Now we see this is a type resistance. Now, not with every controller software, but with this controller software, we're going to have to go and take this resistance and put it into a temp table. Depending on whose software you're using, you may run into where they actually just go and let you manually set your table or automatically set your table in the input. Here we don't have that option. That's why we have to go to this EZIO sensor, preset temp table, drag this guy over here. We want to go here and grab our Johnson Controls 1K nickel. Want to make sure that at least for in the States, we're degrees Fahrenheit. And we want to just call this ZNT. Or we could just leave it preset T. It doesn't really matter. We're going to tell that we're doing that just by looking at this right here. Now zone temp is going to come out from there and into this table. This table is going to scale the resistance to be a temperature. Now you notice it's negative 322. That's because this UI has no resistance. If this was an actual temperature sensor being plugged into a physical input, then we would see a different value here. 
Next up, what we have to do is we have to say if temperature is above set point by more than two degrees. So what blocks did we talk about in lesson three that we could go and do that? Think for a second. We talked about the comparator block, right? We talked about how the comparator block is going to compare two different values and it's going to have a greater than, equal to, or less than value. Now you can see with the EZIO comparator block, they actually do all three. As I mentioned, some comparator blocks do all three. Some are greater than or less than blocks. Some of them are actually separate blocks. It just depends. So in this case, we take our output and we connect it to X because we want zone temperature is greater than. So the zone temperature, just listen to that sentence, right? Zone temperature is greater than set point. So right off the bat, you always want to program how you're going to read the sequence because then when someone's reading this from a service perspective or a troubleshooting perspective, it's going to be very easy for them as they're going to read zone temperature is greater than whatever set point. Now we know we need a set point, so we need a logical point. We're going to go here and we're going to add a writable float. We remember from our earlier lessons in the previous modules the difference between floats, booleans, and integers. Well, what we're doing here is since this is a comparator and you can see it's a float based on the decimal aspect, we're going to have to use a writable float to come in here. But here's the deal. We could just go and call this ZNT underscore SP, zone temperature set point. Write it to, by clicking actions set, we could just simply say it's 72 degrees. And we could just wire right into Y. And we would be completely wrong. We would not be achieving our sequence. Why? Because in this case, it said, Zone temp is greater than set point plus two degrees. So we need to go and add two degrees to the set point. And we could do that by making another object control, but this time a constant float, because we don't want to make it to where folks can easily change that dead band. So we would simply go here, set that to two, Add that. All right, we're connected. We see now our output is 74. And so now we have X. When X is greater than Y, plus that 2 degrees. So when temperature is greater than set point, plus that 2 degrees, then we will have our output turn on. So you see, we can go and do that right there. Now you may be saying, but Phil, why is it not letting you go and drag this right here? Why are we not able to drag this comparator to this Boolean object? Well, you'll notice what's happening, right? You see me going out, out, out. That's something you need to be careful of and something that you can get very, very frustrated with. You notice how these have inputs and outputs. Some blocks, some programming software will do it like this where everything's on the left. Other programming software will have some stuff on the right and some stuff on the left. When you run into programming software where you have the output on the same side as the input, you've got to pay a lot of attention to that. Because if you try to do that right there, you're going to see I get the circle with X. But if I go down simply to the in, and there you go. And now you can see our design pattern. Lesson one, taking a temperature, comparing it to set point with a dead band, and then commanding an output. You'll use this time and time again in economizer sequencing, exhaust fan, crack units. The list goes on and on and on. So that's how you'll write this program. If you have any questions, then just simply go to the discussion section right at the top of this module 
and ask your questions. I'd love to help you better understand this design pattern. But you see, you just wrote a basic design pattern that will allow you to enable many different things. Now you can enable economizer, you could enable exhaust fan, you could enable a unit heater. The list is almost endless as to the things you could enable with this very simple design pattern. And so this is how we're going to approach the design patterns as we continue to move through this module. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to talk to you in the next lesson. Take care.